other than say a knife that looks like this or I don't know, whatever the shit this knife is called, perhaps one of the most iconic and functional knife designs is a sodbuster. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure, I just assume it is. According to the Google, a sodbuster is a few things, like a farmer, a farm hand, a homesteader, someone who works the land, or one who participates in sod... Oh, um, that last one was the Urban Dictionary definition. Never mind. So I guess it's the knife of a farmer. And in this case, the knife we're looking at, it's the, the case sodbuster, or the full-size version with yellow synthetic handles. Sodbusters generally don't have a full lock, but a slip joint with a functional basic curved handle, a thumb nick, a drop point or clip point or sheep's foot, and is the knife most likely to be carried by an old guy. But before we get into any more of these, let's look at the dimensions like the overall length and weight. Blade length and cutting edge. Handle size, grip area. Spine thickness, handle thickness. And the tallness closed. This full size sodbuster, not to be confused with the junior sodbuster, features a slightly over three and a half inch blade with about a three inch cutting edge. The blade, as Case puts it, is a Skinner blade with severe chrome vanadium steel, or vanadium if you choose not to ignore the second A. Maybe the definition of the Skinner blade has changed over time, but I feel like this is a case of I do not think that word means what you think it means. To me, though, it looks like a standard drop point with a flat grind. The chrome vanadium blade will stain and patina after not a whole lot of use because it's not a stainless steel. Case does make knives with stainless steel blades known as Case True Sharp Surgical Steel, made for doctors I assume. According to the internet, and by that I mean people on blade forums said, it's a variation of a 1095 carbon steel. So like me, you can repeat it as fact now. My blade's original lightly tumbled finish is starting to discolor because I ate a steak with it and also some light Instagram use. Out of the box, it was sharp except for the maybe last quarter inch to the tip, which was kind of dull, like a video about a knife. The blade is non-tactical with a two-handed opening with a thumb nick, which is probably there mostly for looks because I find it easier to open by using two fingers and pulling. The knife is technically non-locking because, well, it's a slip joint. However, though, it does have a decently strong back spring that allows the blade to click into place when opening or closing. The back spring isn't quite as strong as my Kudman, Kudman, or my Boker Slack. Both of those knives have nicked me a few times when closing. And you're like, hmm, that's really surprising. Blade retention when closed, be good, and you can't fling it open. I would assume only the worst slip joints would allow that. The Sodbuster can be had in many handle variations like Eagle Bone, Whale Bone, and Human Bone, but I chose the yellow synthetic handle because yellow is pretty and the color of PP. Since there is no clip, the handle and yellow plastic scales are rounded and comfortable to squeeze and or hold. The scales are held onto the knife with brass pins over a brass liner, although the butt of the handle is a tad sharp on mine, right here in this area. It could use a light sanding. Otherwise, the handle is smooth and doesn't provide a whole lot of texture in wet conditions other than the strongness and sureness of your grip. There ain't no pocket clip. This is kind of a large knife to be floating around down in the bottom of your pocket. Well, I mean, the sheep may think you're happy to see them. I actually do plan on trying out some small clip sheaths in the future to solve this problem, but I think manufacturers should really get in on that and, you know, offer a few for their own knives. Otherwise, it's a toolbox, a glove box, or a man bag, or a woman bag knife. Maybe you have big pockets, I don't know. All right, let's do some comparisons. First, let's look at the Sodbuster. It's big and kind of a faded yellow, kind of, kind of a washed out yellow, like Big Bird after a drug problem. I think it's a nice looking knife. A lot of knife manufacturers make Sodbusters, but I wanted an affordable made in the USA version with a three inch or larger blade. Also a helpful tip when searching retailers online, sometimes Sodbuster is one word and sometimes it's two words, Sodbusters, even within the same brand and same knife style. Go figure. Next, the Cudman Classic Slip Joint Folder. 
This one's about 25 bucks on Amazon. It has a very strong back spring and a long pointy blade good for piercing. However, the Amazon description says bullhorn, which is probably bullshit because mine feels and looks a lot like unfinished olive wood. It's made in Spain and it's, it's a pretty fine knife. Look for a full review in weeks. Okay, the Boker Slack. Also, like the Cudeman, it's a very strong backspring. I'm probably pronouncing Cudeman wrong, by the way, so someone can correct me in the comments. Now, on one hand, the case is a loner-friendly blade, but both the Boker and the Cudeman are not easy closers. The Slack uses a VG10 stainless steel. It's made in China and costs about $100, so hopefully that figures into your decision. The Boker Slack has a little bit better fit and finish than the case. All right, how about the Duke Duke? Finally, the Duke Duke saga has ended. Well, it actually ended in the last review, but here it is. This one ain't an easy closer either and can be had in a blade size larger like the other ones here, but I opted for the smaller version because I didn't know what I was buying online. Fit and finish is the worst of the four. However, it is well built and according to internet legend, many people were terrorized and murdered in Saharan Africa with them, so. That's not cool, I guess. I mean, unless you think murder's cool. Yeah, we're done here. Now, when most people who really don't do knives are given a knife, and if you pay attention to how they expect to open and close it, well, they expect a slip joint, or you to close it for them. Usually, if they can't apply pressure to a blade and close it, they furrow their brow and say, hmm, how do you come um, close? Give it to me. And while these observations don't really mean much, it does point to the fact that a knife, like the case Sodbuster, is basically the knife a lot of people expect out of a pocket knife. The blade will darken and change color with light use, making it look well used in a short amount of time for people who don't use their knives very often. Oh, you've had this for a while, huh? Yeah, it was my grandpa's. It's a nice solid buy for $30 and probably one of the cheapest made in USA Sodbusters you can buy in this size blade. I think maybe Baron Sons makes one too, so look for that if you, you're curious. There's many more expensive ones though, and if you're that kind of dude, buy one. Anyway, if you like this review, subscribe to my channel. Give the video a thumbs up. Sorry. Baton through that like button, bro. Thanks to Kyle Miller for that one. Unless you're a jerk. I mean, Kyle Miller isn't a jerk, but the people who don't do thumbs up might be jerks. I guess that's just one metric though, so maybe it's a bad way to judge a person's character. Huh. Or maybe it isn't a bad way and it's indicative of a larger problem. Oh, leave a comment. Thanks for watching.